Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to a chilly but cozy Ask an Engineer. I'm here at the Adafruit factory. It's where we do all our design, testing, manufacturing, coding, shipping of all the goodies and electronics that maybe you picked up over the uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, I'm Lady Ada, with me is Mr. Lady Ada on camera control. We've got an exciting show for you tonight with discount codes, news, examples, videos, projects, giveaways, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, I can't get, wait to get into it. It's gonna be a massive show, best ever show. Every week's the best ever. What's on tonight's show, Mr. Lady Ada? We can kick this off. On tonight's show, the code's ornament. We'll tell you why. 10% off in the Adafruit store, all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. It supports us, an open source hardware company, and all these people here in New York and around the world, because we have a lot of remote people, too. Show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady Ada will talk about who's on the show and tell and more. Pack and bail bag will stop by. That's when we read your letters to us. We have some news in the wonderful world of Python on hardware. Time travel, look around the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and more. Help wanted, the Adafruit Jobs Board is kicking, and lots of people are posting up their skills to pay the bills, and they're also companies that put their jobs up there to find cool makers, like you, maybe. Made in New York City, some factory footage and more from Adafruit, 3D printing, some stuff from Noah and Pedro. We've got some new products. We have a really neat top secret. We'll answer your questions, and we do that over on Discord, adafruit.it slash discord and at the end we give away some all that and more on you guessed it dun, dun, dun. ask an engineer yay all righty well um let's uh pay some bills ornament, that's ornament. Code. uh we have freebies going on right now we just got through the holiday but sales, we still have freebies left but we still have freebies and we're still doing discounts yes so if you missed out on any of the holiday sales or um and i'll i'll, I'll talk about this uh, later um you know we did uh, giving tuesday as well. That's right. Not only did we give some money, but we uh, tried to help get the word out on some causes. So if you said, if you said, you know what, I'm not going to do Black Friday, not going to do Cyber Monday, I'm just going to wait till like Wednesday night because I know Adafruit has a discount code. You could do that too, and you still get the freebies. Get two for. Yeah. Free, free discounts, goodies. It's a good time. When you order nine nine dollars or more, you get a free Prime Proto half size breadboard. So a PCB looks like a breadboard. You can take your solderless breadboard projects, solder them on this. Now they're permanent. Thus the PERMA in PERMA Proto. $199 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping. This is good quality shipping with tracking. If you're ordering something, something for the holidays, it's a good idea, especially if you're ordering now, you can pick UPS ground. It's trackable. You know where it is. You know where it's going to get to you. It's reliable. We, you know, especially now, people are like ordering gifts and stuff. You want to be a little more sure. Maybe you don't want to order something where it could be take two to three weeks. That's why we like UPS Ground. It's so reliable. And then $2.99 or more, you get a free Circuit Playground Express, our all-in-one dev board. Great as a gift, great for students, great for teachers, great for everybody. Uh, no matter what you're building, it's got LEDs and sensors and buttons and capacitive touch. Runs a Circuit Python, code.org, CS Discoveries, um, Arduino, or MakeCode, our block-based editor from Microsoft. So it's kind of great for everybody from beginner to expert. Okay, and if you're checking out UPS Ground, that's the best way to go. Um, trackable, reliable, and uh, Good. it just works. Uh, Postal, if you want to wait a little bit longer, um, that is the service that will take a little bit longer. Sometimes it disappears, sometimes it uh, comes back into um, status world. Uh, just know that that's one of the ones that may take a little bit longer. And then DHL, that's the best one for international sales right through customs and more. We have our shipping deadlines posted up on our site. Check it out, Aid for Holiday Shipping Deadlines. We have this as a banner on our site, and we have this linked all over our gift guides and more because there's only so many days left. You still have plenty of chances right now to make mistakes, but later on you won't. <laughs> so you could you could choose something and then be like, oh, maybe I should have got faster. There's still time, um, but soon there won't be. Same day in Manhattan. Check out before 11 a.m. If it's one of the zip codes that is in Manhattan, you can get it same day as long as you check out before 11 a.m. Uh, Lady Ada, we yeah. have a show and tell. We do this every single week. We do. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do, if you want to did. share your projects, come over and um, look for it. We have a blog post on our site, and it's also on Google+. But Lady Ada, who was there? Okay, we had a couple people come by. We had JP showing off a teaser for 
tomorrow's John Park workshop. It's a trellis deck demo. It's a good, like a launch deck. You have 32 buttons and you can color code them. And when you press them, it can launch apps or like even write an email or uh, change the volume on your computer or play and pause music. All sorts of good stuff that you can do. And it's like really easy to use. It's fun. And it can work with any operating system. It's open source. So he'll be showing that off tomorrow on his show, JP's uh, Workbench. So check that out. Um, no and Pedro, uh, they went on a, a holiday trip to Epcot Center. But no holiday is complete without your own uh, Circuit Python GPS Featherwing based tour guide. Plugging in a GPS into a Halloween turns it into a display and audio playback tour guide. As they walked around Epcot Center, it would uh, tell them about where they are using the GPS to know exactly where in the park they're at. It would tell them about the country they're visiting or about the, um, the spaceship Earth and the history of it. So it's a really fun little project, but um, it's a good basis for a lot of uh, geocaching or reverse geocaching projects. You want an image to display or audio to play when you get to a location. So this, this code base is a really good example. Even if you're not going to Epcot, you can put any location you want. Yeah, you know you're playing a video game and when you go from place to place there's a different song? You can actually build this now. You can build that now. And it's only... And um, it'll even have little icons. Yeah, you can change the image and it's um, really easy to do at Circuit Python. It, uh, you can take the base code, put in GPS coordinates, put in images, put in different sounds, you're done. Yeah. Pretty much out of the box. It's a good project and it's, and it's so easy to do with Circuit Python. Scott showed off a plethora of dev boards on his desk. He's got the Tomu, the Teeny SPGA. He's got uh, some lattice boards, some like an Ice 40 thing going on, like some stuff F FPGA board, and uh, the Teeny sorry, the lattice, the Teeny FPGA, the Tomu, and there was one more that I can't even remember. There were so many dev boards that he was showing off. He had an STM32 dev board that he hasn't wasn't showing off quite yet. Um, been working a lot of USB stuff and is excited to get USB stacks running on all of these different dev boards. Um, and then Sophie came by. She has a, a project in this current Hackspace magazine. We'll be showing that off as well. And she came and live demoed it. It was such an honor. It's the Meow Glove. It's a Halloween that has like a really cool graphic on it. And then uh, it has the touch sensors connected to your fingers. So when you like touch your fingers together, it plays different meows. And so you can have a little glove that just meows. When, like it's kind of useful because you're, maybe you're in a band or maybe you just want to hear cat sounds all the time because you're addicted to cats. Um, so that's the Halloween uh, based meow glove. And she said she really liked doing circuit Python. I know she's been trying to do more Python code. And she's like, this was really easy. Like it took longer to sew the glove together than it did to, 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 to write the code. And then Jim came by with a, a cute board that he designed. It has an LM358 uh, dual op amp and uh, a charge pump that takes up to negative 12 volts and inverts it. So you have a split supply for your op amp. So like, you know, it's a lot of op amps, they work best from you know, negative five to five, negative 10 to 10, negative 12 to 12. Um, this lets you have that sort of some signal processing management or it's like some synthesizers they really like to have. A, uh, a wide range, uh, a wide voltage range and negative voltages. Um, so check out this cool board from Jim. He came by and showed it off. There was an Oshpark board. I think maybe he, uh, it's, uh, we posted about it or somebody's posted about it. So hopefully we'll uh, share that link. And that was the show and tell. Okay. All participants on the show and tell get an SC non show and tell sticker. Email support at adafruit.com if you're on the show and tell and want a sticker. Part of our Adafruit live series of shows. Tomorrow, John Park's workshop returns. Yay! It I missed it. Well, it was Thursday. It was Turkey. Day I know, so but I was eating turkey tomorrow. and I was missing the JP watch. Um, so that's uh, that's what's going on. Uh, Pack mailbag. These are the emails and more that we read at our weekly company meeting called State of the Fruit. We also read them here. This is from LF. Same initials oh. Um Thank you so much. I'm a huge me. fan of your website, and I credit it with helping me get into electronic tinkering, which is now one of my passions, and hopefully a new career path. Oh, that's nice, LF. Yeah. Maybe she will grow up and make a new Adafruit. Yeah. From your business. That'd be cool. Uh, don't forget, we're on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. How many people uh, do we have on Discord, by the way? Well, um, we'll talk about that in a bit, but it's uh, 9,000. We're still wow. 9,000. Yay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Sorry. I just I was curious. Right. curious. That's fine. All right. Glad you asked. Glad I prepared that graphic. Oh, good work there. Um, so uh, because last week was Thanksgiving holiday, there wasn't 
GP show, so therefore not a Make Code Minute. Oh, so that's However, the only Make Code news, right? There okay. is Make Code Wait, news. Wait, what? There's Make Code news? Yeah, so this is a big deal. Um, this is a new thing that the folks at Make Code did with Rob, a fantastic educator, and it's a maker course for the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. Is it like a full course of like all these different things you can make and program using Make Code Circuit Playground Express that for teachers, it. educators, and students? That's exactly what it is. But how much is it? Well, like how much do I have to pay for it? It's it's free. What? It's free? Uh, yeah. You mean there's like a free online maker course? Yeah, it's free. So if you have a Circuit Playground Express, you can go there right now I'll and build simulator. all these projects. Yeah. Well, you can use a simulator. So. Um, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So all you have to do is um, we have a blog post. Uh, about this, but if you go to makecode.adafruit.com slash courses slash maker, you can check this out. And there's a fr uh, ton of uh, fun tutorials and more. And this is uh, le yet the latest, easiest, low cost way to start learning how to code and make things. Is it possible that people could order stuff from the Adafruit store and get one free? Yeah, we went over that. All right, tune in and learn more. <laughs> See, I'm going to tie it together. That's old news. Oh, you can just pick uh, one up. We have yeah. lots in stock. So that is. Um, yet another resource coming up soon um, in what's well, on our blog but then in our newsletter which I'll talk about later uh, someone put together a complete course on using CircuitPython with Circuit Playground so one of the things if you're an educator and you're thinking about like well I only have like 20 bucks something to spend per student um, the Circuit Playground Express you can start off with make code, block editing, go to JavaScript cool, then go to Circuit Python can also do Arduino, can also do um, code.org discovery. So you have all those choices there. And so the biggest bang for your That's buck so for an educator, choice. you know, it's a lot, if it's just, if you're just trying to teach coding, then you're stuck on a screen. If you're just gonna try to teach microcontrollers and there's no sensors or lights or sound, that's really hard to keep people engaged. And mm -hmm. also you wanna probably have something that maybe you don't even need an IDE. You just wanna be able to start writing code right away. So that's yeah. why we have this stuff. So I'm excited. Thanks um, that is pretty exciting. for doing this. Okay. Um, so speaking of, welcome to the wonderful world of CircuitPython. Yay, it's time for Blinka. Yeah, well, this week is interesting. and I, Oh my goodness. Yeah. What's going on here? This I saw in a dream. Yeah? Um, well, the dream was called, maybe there's a way to unify all the weirdo Linux boards out there that are hard to use. Yeah. But um, that dream didn't happen for a while, but it turns out a Lady Ada needed to come along. So this is called LibGPIOD, and I wanted to to like pseudo interview you about this because I know what this is um, and I know what we used to have to do with Linux and I know and I know this is kind of one of those weird things that Adafruit does that like no, no one's going to talk about anywhere but then later on this is going to be the standard. Yeah. Kind of like Feather. Yeah. Ain't nobody was talking about Feather and now Feather is well, kind of the Well, they didn't even know standard. that they needed a Feather. Well, I sent some... They wanted know, a horseless carriage and I'm just like, you want a Feather. Yeah, I think it's a little bit like that. It's like, oh, here, here's, a, here's a spec, here's the thing. So um, when people wanted to do some type of... Is this the interview we started? Yeah. Okay, so great. when people wanted to do something with a Raspberry Pi or like a friendly ARM Nano Pi or Banana Pi or Free Libre Linux board, um, how, how would they get sensor information and how would they get like digital signals in? Well, good luck because every ARM board had a slightly different way of doing it. Yeah, Raspberry Pi none of it was the same. I know, none of it was different. Um, each one had its own different kind of bindings for how to do GPIO. Um, often they, they did have the same I2C, but usually you do need to have GPIO along with I2C or SPI um, to control like uh, different pins or, or agreed interrupts. And every single chip was different. Every chip had their own little helper, a little binding program, like Raspberry Pi has RPI GPIO. And then for BeagleBone, we actually wrote one. It's called like Adafruit BBIO. Um, but it was different for every single board. And so there was no way, if you go to driver, you'd have to kind of go through and, and, and port it each time. It wouldn't yeah. be a ton of work, but like every board, you'd have to do all this extra and effort to and for you, every single driver. And you had to do things like, well, I'm going to write to a file called pin 16. Yeah, that's There's this, a file. Like, the yeah. only cross-platform way to do it was called Sisyphus, yeah. which is um, like the like ancient... Uh, uh, myth, you would you would be like pushing this thing up a hill and then you'd get run over by it. Like yeah. it was, it's not dissimilar. Um, but it would actually have a file system. It would have a, a, a fake file system item for every GPIO and you could write and read to it. But it was, you you could only like set it high or low. It was like really slow because it went through the file system. So like you could only do maybe like a kilohertz or two um, speeds, which is, it, it's just not bad. I mean, like it's better than not being able to do it, but it was still much too slow to bit bang GPIO stuff, like if you want to bit bang SPI okay. or, or talk All right, to so sensors. let's say if you want to do something faster, 
what, what terrible thing would you have to do? <laughs> well, the other option, which is what a lot of these um, binding programs would do, and um, I, I, I always, whenever I, when I first heard about this, I thought it was just so bizarre. You'd actually open up DevMem. You'd open up the memory, and then you'd seek to the register address for the GPIO peripheral. So, for example, in a lot of ARM chips, it's like uh, 4000, like 2800 or something. It's in the 40, uh, 4000 uh, high byte range. And then you'd actually read and write from the register, sort of like um, like my metaphor is like a lot of people who've done our, uh, AVR chips, like earlier PIC or AVR chips, you'd actually do like port B, you know, pipe equals uh, 0x01, and that would toggle a bit high. And you'd like, you know, ampersand yeah. toggle to, to set it low. You'd actually write to like port B, like all caps, or DDRD or whatever. You'd actually write to that register. So ironically, in like the Cortex chips, like you don't really do that because there's like so much stuff going on that you can't write. You can, but it's like a real pain. You usually have to use SimSys. But then what's funny is that you zip away all the way around to like ARM7, and then you're back to doing that. You just, you just basically seek to that register location, and you just write the byte, which um, is incredibly fast, right? Because you're, you're talking directly to the chip. But it's a terrible, terrible idea, and every chip is a little bit different. Everyone yeah. has, you know, and then even the... Raspberry Pi, the different chips when they went to the Pi 1, Pi 2, Pi 3, that register address moved around. And um, another thing that's kind of ironic is once in a while you get a, a, a Raspberry Pi that doesn't know what board it is because it got misprogrammed or something. This happened a long time ago. And it would write to the wrong location because you're, yeah. it thinks it's something else. So it's, it's kind of um, like hilarious and um, extremely fast and just a terrible, terrible idea. And again, you have to go through each board and, and okay. customize it. So you spent a bunch of time on this and Brendan helped out and now there's something better that should well, I didn't. Be... I didn't write libgpid. No, 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 you didn't. But you have something that works with, and this should work with Linux kernel 4.8 and above. going forward. Yeah, so and so they... you have something because it was announced in February. They're like, hey, there's this there's new thing, thing. New thing. Mainline. And it's in mainline. Mainline. It's called libgpod. Libgpod. But, but and then, nothing yeah. has been released for it. What's well, a like GPIO? There's a GPIO kernel interface now, so it's kind of in the middle, right? It's not as incredibly fast and dangerous as the devmem prodding, and it's not as slow and clunky as Sisyphus. You use, you're using ioctals, so they're you know fairly fast. Um, and then there's bindings. There's a there's libgpod is actually the binding on top of this this kernel interface. And um, there's C++ and C and um, Python bindings. And I think there's also bindings for Go, Lang, and uh, some other languages as well, that send these ioctals and let you, um, through the kernel, you know, you, it's, they're just called like GPIO chips, and then you have the, the, the pin, and, you, and the kernel registers what pins are available, and then you can read and write to them, and they're a lot safer. You know, you, you hold the line to no other, that's another thing, unlike a dev mem, you get multiple processes like writing to memory, and like they don't know, like they're doing their own thing. And um, with this, you can hold the line and own it. And so other processes can't take control of it, which is nice. It kind of has a, a semaphore thing going on. And it's also fairly fast. I mean, it's not a blazingly fast. Again, it's not as fast as writing directly to memory, directly to registers. But it's, I got like 10 kilohertz, I think, or maybe 30 kilohertz. Um, no, sorry, 40 kilohertz from C and from Python, I got 10 kilohertz toggle, which is, which is not bad, right? I mean, considering you're going through the kernel, it's, it's, you know, it's totally safe and protected. Um, that's good enough for a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, so for the folks yeah. who know about this, it's like, oh, this is this is going to be really interesting and possibly change the landscape for Linux boards because now you're able to write something once and you don't have to do something different for every single one. So a little shout out to Grogard, who's in the Discord, who does um, some interesting Linux stuff. But um, good work. I, I think this is going to be one of those things, much like the Feather. I was I was there when you're like, here's what Feather's going to be. I, this reminds me of that because I think it Well, I really want to be done with You know, it's like yeah. a, we wrote, you know, 120 circuit Python libraries. For every sensor, from the HCSR04, you know, two dollar ultrasonic, all the way to the BME680, to you know the VS1053, like every chip we've we've written a driver for I squared C or SPRUR or GPIO, like character LCD. We just did a huge rewrite of all the character LCD libraries. The goal here is I do not want to keep writing like here's the version for Orange Pi and here's the version yeah. for here's BeagleBone here's Beagle Raspberry Pi here's, here's the because there's like a new Linux board like every eight minutes like it's yeah. impossible and each one has like slightly different configuration settings and there's only going to be more embedded Linux and I think Python embedded Linux is the future so having all these drivers I think will um, kind of do well, it can't, by using Circuit Python as the base API and libgpiod is that as that pure kernel interface, yeah. we are separating um, the hardware from 
all the weirdness that is in the device tree. Like, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to know about it. You know, I just want to say pin five is pin five and, and kernel, you take care of the rest. Yeah, I don't want to take care of that. So anyways, good work. And uh, this is an, I think this was a very nice thing that you did because a lot of people do a lot of specific work for only their dev board, only their chipset. Yeah. And I get it because they want to sell those, but we decided let's do something for everybody. And you know, maybe rising tide boat thing will happen. I think it's good. And I think, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm going to do maybe the first board this weekend to add a new board that I'm going to do, you know, like Scott has, has done a really good job of this, like writing a porting guide. Here's how you would add your own yeah. board. I'm, I'm not going to be, there's so many. I actually don't even, like we learned about a new one this weekend, like the Libre board. I'm like, I don't even heard about this thing. Yeah. So maybe people who get these boards will be able to add circuit Python support. It's not that hard. It's only a couple of files that they just have to define, define all the pins. And then with libgpod, they don't have to do any special work beyond just defining the pins. I squared C standard on, on kernels, SPI is standard on kernels, and UART is standard in, in kernels. So that kind of, be, you know, all together, I mean, we still have analog digital inputs in PWMs, which are not standardized. The GPIOD doesn't talk about that, it only does digital inputs and outputs. So that's, those, those two are the, ADCs and PWMs are still kind of messy, but we can get like the big four, right? Clean GPIO, I squared C, SPI, um, and UART, and that covers like 95% of, of so, these cases. Thanks for listening about this because like this will be important we think one day. Um, and it's interesting there's not a lot of libgpid code out there you know I looked out and it was like I mean I, I was able to find the documentation is good enough that I was easily able to write the code but it's actually and there's some examples yeah. but it's actually very uh, it's not used yet and it's a shame people should use it I think I think because everyone's got this crutch they've got these uh, existing you know orange pie dot GPIO bindings they're like well you know why should I do anything else it's like well no you really it's like pull the band-aid yeah. off get get off of this because you, otherwise you will not be able to maintain and it and for those who are just like getting started maybe with programming and maybe they're using circuit python good news the circuit python you're learning now means you'll be able to program linux boards like that that, that is yeah. that is a reality that's going to happen. So um, one little bit, uh, this is real time feedback for Wait, you. Um, Gogart says it was a no brainer setup. Didn't have to set up all the pins. It just found them from the DTS. Libgpod, yeah. I mean, it's it's it is a high class. Well, that that's not my part. That's the guy. That's the part that the kernel did. I think. Probably. Yeah, but either way. It was easy to set up. It was Libgpod is, is easy to set up, and I think adding Circuit Python support is going to be very easy. You don't too. hear anyone say something's easy with Linux. No. I'm just celebrating that. That's a, that's <laughs> impossible that's a, for both <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, anyways, so, moving along. So we think that's big news. Um, the other big news was, uh, thank you everyone in Discord, we are now at 9,000 humans. So that's 9,000 people in the community helping each other out all the time. Lots of them are watching right now or in the chat. Thank you so much. Other Python news. Um, this is from Hackspace Magazine. Sophie, who's in the chat and on show and tell, showed this meow glove. Meow yeah, synth. This is a uh, prop wing circuit Python powered lightsaber that also um, says ho 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 Merry Christmas and stuff like that so it's a Santa themed one uh, Todd who is at Supercon got this oh, that's nice to get the three Halloween. printed yeah got this Halloween Look. this is a Hackaday uh, conference I like this because this, this, lo this is the logo I designed a million years ago um, it's still it's still around and oh, so you got the skull teeth and everything you got yeah, added four skull teeth it's skull skull and skull so that was cool um, thanks for that, Todd. This is the Crunch Lab um, lunchbox synth, the Crunch oh, Crunchable nice. lunchbox synth. So this is a different lunchbox with a um, Circuit Python synth inside of it. Ooh. Um, this is a Linux board. This is that Linux board. Yeah. Yeah. Look this at is that. A feather. It's time to log in. Linux board. I'm excited. Yeah. That'd be so cool. This is a um, Raspberry Pi self-driving car. That uh, we're going to be doing a self-driving car project soon, so get ready. But this was another Python on hardware example. Our most visited uh, project site last week thing yeah. was last week. This is the um, custom circuit Python boards for the Fennec uh, uh, sculptures with um, all sorts. Of, you just got to see that they're super cute. Check them on our site. This is a MicroPython project. Um, given the quality of the air in many places right now, why not make a MicroPython powered? Air quality. I sensor. love it's like a crystal. It's totally um, like what's it called? Looks like the features features of science fiction you're always quoting. Which Which carousel. What? The carousel, carousel. Which Logan's run. Logan's run. It's like a Logan's run thing. Yeah. So. Um, it's like look at the crystal. Yeah. The crystal says, "Don't go outside. You're gonna get cancer." And then um, Moo this week we had some made with Moo stuff. Uh, yeah. Nicholas has a really cool series. Until who's running this? Um, 
this is one of the this is he's making icons of these folks. This is, yeah, this is Xander um, uh, Brown who is uh, helping out with Moo, and so he celebrated Xander. Um, there's a neat post about this young person. Oh, this is an icon doing, of Xander. Yeah, oh, that's so doing, cute. He's doing a lot of um, uh, work with Moo. I love it. This is from. Uh, let me make sure I have the right name of the labs in this. This is the. Hold well, there's like a circuit playground, and yeah, they're learning I to code with sure. So this is from um, the a- L- AI lab or L lab. The L lab uh, co-working in uh, Cali, Colombia, and it's sorry, Grapho Labs. Grapho Labs. And this is um, they're using Moo and circuit uh, playground. Nice. Circuit Python. Um, we have some interesting little projects with Blinka and with Neo Trellis. This is the dice rolling one that they just. Yeah, this so. is he. He plays D and D, and he's like, you know what? I want to make a little dice roller. And he even made the animation. Yeah. So you can select you can um, see the number and stuff like that. How many dice, and then it's like you know six or twenty or twelve sided, whatever, yeah. and you shake it, and it will do the math for you. We had a new guide. This is the sixteen step sequencer. Yeah. We have the Stemma uh, soil sensor. They use circuit yep, python. Yeah, circuit python. This is the new um, Arduino Mega shaped thing. We're Grand calling Central. it the Grand Central, mm-hmm. and this is uh, our not out yet. Don't ask. Um, we have uh, an event coming up. This is coming up this Thursday. Try Python has a Circuit Python event. Other events in the Python world. PyCon that's in Cleveland, May first to 9th. We're still asking for translation help on the messages. Join in. For Circuit Python. We, we have many languages. We could always right. have more. Or if you already have a language, you know, you already speak and read the language that is um, been translated. Check it over. Sometimes there's typos or there's maybe a better or easier way to explain yeah. something. So just because we already have it, translation doesn't mean your uh, smarts and hard work are not appreciated if you want to take a review of it. This is all in our awesome circuit Python list. This is part of Adafruit Daily. Just go to adafruitdaily.com and join us in the Code Plus community circuit Python. Yay! So Python and hardware for the week. Flinka! Okay, time travel. This week, there was lots of things going on in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers. So, okay. there was Black Friday. There was Cyber Monday. There was there's weekend the stuff. weekend in the middle. Yeah. So we we decided we do this every year. We do a few things every year that's different. What do you do? So different? what what we do every year is we of course you know we have a sale. We're kind of required to. Everyone's like oh there would you know well, if you want to get stuff on discount. People I saw some yeah. uh, a teacher got a three D printer. Yeah. Discount. So but we also do because um, we think it's the right thing to do. We don't sell everything. There's amazing maker companies that make and sell stuff that we don't. So we point to them. So we said, here's what Palolo is doing. Great motor drivers. Yes. Here's what sales are going on at SparkFun. Here's the sales that Make had. Here's all this stuff. So we post other company sites every single year. It's super weird. People are like, what's going on? Is there some affiliate? Uh, are you getting nope. paid to do this? No, nope. we just like doing it. We don't even. We support th- other makers. Yeah, because I think if you if we all stick together, um, it's probably better than not. So, um, the other thing we do is on Giving Tuesday, um, we try to you know find some of the sites that are out there or efforts. So um, these are all the ones we post about. This is not everything that either we donate to or try to. Um, so there was um, AT Makers, uh, Python.org, Black Girls Code, Nation of Makers, Nation of Makers, 4H, 4H. Uh, Girls Who Code. The Floss Desktops for Kids. Open Source and Hardware. Open Source Hardware Summit. And then also the OSI. Oh, OSI. And I got my card in the mail. <laughs> I'm, the official, I'm an official member. I get Yay! my card. So every year you get, I get a card. Um, you can tell November 24th. You can see like last yeah, year you, uh, you signed up. That's when I got it. So anyways, um, on to more. So Adafruit Jobs Board. Jobs.adafruit.com. You can post... If you're a company, post a job that you want to offer. If you're a person, there are skills that you might have. Put it in the skills section. So two jobs we're featuring this week. Hackaday is looking for a community manager. I used to run Hackaday. You should probably do it. Um, it's a good idea. Next up, social media content manager. This is for DNA Lounge. You're if, super cool. If you are if you want to be the coolest, gothiest, like music-loving person in San Francisco at one of the... I mean, you're going to be the coolest person in the city. Yeah, no question. So, I mean... Uh, this is cool. So these are the two jobs. That one is... You, you don't even have to be bitter. Yeah. You might think, oh, do I have to be like bitter and angry? Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah, you can. You, you don't even have to be goth. It, Although, it, it might help. Helps. Yeah. All right. So uh, move. So that's jobs that I need for Duck. Check that out. And many, and like dozens of other jobs yep. that you can apply for. Yeah, there's like 50 push. jobs on the job already. Dude, there's a lot of people who want to hire you. Yep. If you're watching, you need a job, check them out. Um, we're an open source hardware company. 
We are there, indeed. Uh, there might not be that many left, but we're one. Yay! Uh, <laughs> we have we're 1, still 000. doing this. We're still going to do it. Um, 1,656 guys. tutorials. Okay, guys. well. What's on the big board? This okay, week, last week, I think we talked about this. We will do it again. Circuit Python, the piece for PCB of the guide that or goes with the yeah. video. It's just to do the demo. Yeah. Is this demo new or no? No. Okay, uh, the Thanksgiving Go Back Turkey Hand. This is adorable. It's a cricket with Circuit Playground Express. Put a speaker and then you can cut one of those little hand turkeys out. And then um, uh, Dana, who got this, got uh, found a great public domain uh, image of these um, leaves that you can make it kind of seem fall like and turkey like. And then a googly eye. And then uh, when you shake it or pick it up or move it, um, it'll it'll go gobble gobble gobble, and then the head will move back and forth. So this is a, and it's battery powered, so you can put it in the center of your Thanksgiving dinner as a as a centerpiece. Um, we got from Davis Stells the Microblock Circuit Playground Express ornament. It's pretty neat. We saw this Microblocks thing. We saw that supported Circuit Playground Express more. We said, hey, Dave, want to check this out? You know, he wrote um, a guide about Microlisp and Forth on the Circuit Playground Express. Oh, sorry, on the M4. And I thought this could be kind of interesting. And he, um, he did. He actually thought it was really cool. It's a block-based system, but it does dynamic updates. So as you're editing the blocks, it immediately starts running. And so um, in the guide, he shows that there's a little animated GIF where you can set the NeoPixel colors, and it's like real time. So it's kind of like a REPL for block-based programming. Kind of neat. Check it out. Um, it, again, it works with Circuit Playground Express and a bunch of other M0 boards that we stock. So uh, you can, but the Circuit Playground Express, it's great because it has all the sensors built in, of course. We've got the Christmas soundboard with Neo Trellis, also by Dano. Um, this one's fun. It's like a little tree with snow <laughs> drawing on the uh, Neo Trellis. And um, we found a bunch of attribution, public domain, and uh, you know, available sounds that you can add onto your Neo Trellis to have it go ho, 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 and Merry Christmas, and jingle bells, and, and make all sorts of wintry holiday sounds. Um, so it could be fun, and then uh, because all the sounds are available and uh, can be downloaded by you, you just download the pack, uh, throw it onto your Neo Trellis, and you've got a holiday soundboard. Uh, and then uh, the GPS tour guide, we will maybe show that video shortly. It's just um, a Halloween, Halloween, guide that uses, because um, it's the Halloween has the feather sockets on the back, you can plug in a GPS feathering, and then you can walk around, and it will display um, uh, images and play sounds based on where you are. Uh, for the new product this week, we've got the I2S Audio Bond for Raspberry Pi guide. Just goes through how to wire up, uh, sorry, how to um, install I2S support for Raspberry Pi. We added a little update to make it pop, uh, make, get rid of all the popping when you start and stop playing sound. We got found a cute hack, thanks to Brennan for adding that. And then the last Reef Pie guide is an epic guide uh, um, uh, series, seven guides. Uh, this final one uh, shows how to change the, how to attach a dosing controller. So it can add acidic or basic, um, I think, or, or, or like liquid food uh, using uh, peristaltic pumps and all the Reef Pie system that you've done so far, the pH monitor, the temperature monitor, the lights, and all the other control systems. So this is a full uh, autonomous, Reef controller, which is way cooler than an autonomous car. I think I think the future would use this a lot more. Okay. Next up in New York City, we have factory footage. Take it away, Avery Factory. Yay!
Okay, other made in NYC footage. This is a prototype one. Oh yeah, this is we're making the, uh, I think this is the MPU 9250 breakout. We're making a prototype and we're gonna test it. It comes in purple. It's not from Osh Park, but it's purple. We open the show with this. We're gonna be doing some reindeer related projects. I like how the eyes are just slightly askew. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kinda like, they're synchronized, but it's kinda like looking off to the side. Yep. It's a magnifying glass with our stenciler. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. You can look at the details. And as always, we either have a sunrise or sunset outside the Adafruit factory windows. It's what the pick and places go to sleep or wake up to every single night. That's nice. Yep. Okay, 3D printing. We got some videos and more from Noah and Pedro. This one is, um, I think, going to be one of those projects that a lot of people do unexpected things with it. It's the uh, location-based music player is yeah. the best way to explain it, but yeah. they're going to show a video. Okay. Take it away. Hey, what's up, guys? In this project, we're making a GPS tour guide that you can build to make a geocaching music player. So when we get to a location, it'll display an image in playback music or audio clips. This uses the Adafruit Hollowing and Ultimate GPS Featherwing. All of the components are housed in our 3D printed case that snap fits together. You can also add a lanyard to wear this around and explore new areas to unlock hidden messages. Get the 3D files to build this project, links are in the description. All of the electronics and components are also listed in our tutorial. The Adafruit Halloween has a lot of onboard components and features the feather form factor, so it's easy to use the ultimate GPS feather wing. Everything fits inside our 3D printed case, so it's easy to put together. The code, written by Dave Estelles, was programmed in Adafruit CircuitPython. The Halloween works like a USB drive, so all of the libraries and assets are stored on the device. This means you can write code and make quick changes on any computer. Check out our learn guide for full documentation, code, and files. Links are in the description. We took this to Disney's Epcot for a test drive, so here's some clips at World Showcase. France. Mexico. China. For more information, be sure to check out the Learn Guide. You could also watch our live stream where we walk through the build and answer your questions. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. Okay, and then we have a speed up, and then I'm gonna have a special video. This is the layer by layer, one minute okay, version. Let's go. So let's do the speed up first. And uh, they sent over this one minute layer by layer. And I thought this was neat because it speeds up all of the things. Like, how do you become known, Pedro? Yeah, well, there's the product. Here's, here's, thing, here's thing, the thing. Thing, thing. Take the file. And within it, one minute, extrude. sped up, you'll see extrude. how they made their Zoop. 3D printed Neo Trellis case. Okay, extrude, extrude. Okay, extruded. Yeah. Ready. Now okay, what? now ready. Now you select it, and then oh, you get it. Okay, you get a little bit less, a little bit more. And then, okay, that's the layer, just the size. And then make a little lip. Okay, good work, good work. And then I don't know what they just did. More 
Let me, I don't know. Oh, you got a little underhang. Ooh, that's so cute. Okay. What's next? Mm -hmm. A cutout, because yep. you have to have a cutout. Okay, good. So you can get your ports and then a little back support. Yeah. And then they added a little like like punk rock. Now it's cool. Studs. Now it's okay. cool looking. So if you want to learn how to make stuff like that, check out 3D Hangouts every Wednesday with Noah Pedro. Um, some IO news. This is interesting. Um, for lots of people out there, so uh, just give you an idea something about Adafruit IO. We have over 10,000 people who are using it right Whew. now, um, and that's like active users. So uh, webhooks are now something we support, and web webhooks are interesting because, uh, and I'll tell you why it's interesting for Adafruit IO. Adafruit IO is all about keys and sessions and like all that stuff. Yeah. Well, webhooks you don't have to use your secret I.O. key to pass data in. Yep. So a webhook, you could just generate something from like Discord or GitHub and push that into your I.O. you can probably even use like a Google, Google document and have the data go straight to I.O. for Yeah, me. so anyways, this is a really neat feature. We're excited to see what people are gonna do with it. You could have anyone on the internet control your holiday lights via a webhook. Yeah. And your I.O. stuff. Um, and so Adafruit I.O. is free if you want a, a pro account, if you want to do a bunch more. Some people have, thank you. Um, that keeps us in business. Uh, it's only like 10 bucks a month. So if you wanted to get an Adafruit I.O. account, now is the time, especially if you're doing IoT stuff. It pays for all this development. Yep. Isn't that nice? New stuff come out? Yes. Okay. Uh, speaking of, there are only a few slots left. If you've not No, we're really going to run out. We are about to close I, the subscribers. We're dead serious. There's, we're about to ship data boxes. It's going to end real soon. Um, you probably could guess what it is, but... Um, but you can't guess everything is in it. Maybe not. But here's, here's, some, here's some ideas of what it could be. Here's some things. It's all about light and sound. Also, if, you're, if there's anyone that wants to get onto the path of making things, go to Adabox.com, get them a gift subscription. This is, I, I, if I was a kid, I would have loved an Adabox subscription. It would have been like my favoridest thing. It yeah. did not exist when I was a kid. Nothing like it. So, so this, is a good, this is a good one for kids, especially kids who, you know, they're going to they're gonna enjoy building stuff. They love being creative. And you see, like, every Adabox that we've done, we have, like, a dozen projects and more projects even after the Adabox. And, like, it's, it's an ecosystem and it's a community. And they'll be part of it. And they can come on Discord and show off what they're making. All right. Uh, a little bit of a reminder before we get off the new products. Uh, the new, new newsletter, sign up. It's uh, on Adafruit Daily. You can also uh, subscribe to it via your account. We don't automatically sign you up. We would never do that because that is wrong. But if you want to get it outside of your account, you can do that on Adafruit Daily now, too, um, along with our other newsletters. Lady Ada, are you ready? Yep. <laughs> Okay, we got these adorable analog panel meters. I'll show them off. We got two, one in three volt, as you see here, zero to three volt. And then we also have one that's zero to five volt, which I'll show it's in the next photo. They look similar, but one takes, as you can probably imagine, zero to three volts DC, and one takes zero to five volt. Now, we are wondering like, when do I ever have an analog output from my controller? Well, you don't have to use analog output. You can use a PWM signal. And that's what I'm doing here with um, a basic Metro. Use analog right or you know whatever PWM output you've got and then I just have it going back and forth so that you can see it's um, kind of nice and, and elegant you can um, change the backing like this you can open this up uh, easily with these screws and this paper backing you can draw anything you want like, it doesn't have to have a number on it you can have a weather meter where it's like sunny to rainy or you can show um, you know, how many emails you have from like zero to infinite or whatever. Um, so you can show anything. And I, I just love these meters. I think that um, the little uh, red line is, is a very um, human friendly way to show information. I know, you know, you have a lot of digital displays and TFTs. This is simple, but very effective. And so you can change out that, that image? Yeah, just it's just a piece of paper. Hmm. You can just change it out to be whatever you want. There's a couple of screws holding it in. But then, yeah, just, just print out whatever you want, put it behind. It can be in color. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, this zero to five volt one, good for five volt microcontrollers like uh, original Arduinos. And we've got the zero to three one, 
good when you have three volt logic, like a, a Metro M0 or a Feather. And then you've got these bolts on the back. You know, alligator clips work well, or you can wrap a wire and then use the screws just to screw it in place. And then there's some uh, mounting screws as well. But these are, um, these are really nice, nice and big, which I like, and uh, very easy to use. Just PWM in and it needle moves, that's it. No motor drivers needed. Okay, next up. This lanyard, yeah. designed by Bruce Yan, is super beautiful. It features all of the characters. Um, and this is a kind of lovely uh, inked, uh, it's very soft, um, it's about an inch wide, two centimeters, two centimeters wide. It's got Billy and Cappy and Blinka and, and Ruby and it's got Adafruit at the end and it's got this cool Blinka purple uh, pink uh, backing with like this little circuit, kind of like a circuitry design. Um, all my favorite characters from Minerva to Adabot. And um, we got this lanyard because, you know, we had... Um, the Ada box and you know we had a, a black lanyard because it was Halloween but maybe you want to you know decorate out and this if you've got your badge life thing going on you want to like really show it off this is going to be cool it's a nice high quality lanyard um you know sometimes you get sponsored logos on your conference badges and those are cool but you know what if you have a badge and you you want to have just a cool electronic lanyard to go with it well here you go you get one yep. so yeah it feels really nice and soft and then yeah you can easily tie this up to make it shorter and with the um if you only have a one hook on your badge, of course, you can just um, hook this onto here if you only have one hole. You know, this one, of course, has two, so you can use both. But if you only have one, just hook it like that. Yep. Okay. This on-off switch. I mean, it's, it's a kind of a cool thing. Hold on, let me grab it. It's, um... Install this on all things that should be turned off, like um, it's, it, wiretap devices, yeah. such as Alexa or... Okay, Google. Well, you, you, these you, you know, might have seen them on machinery or, or like big robots. Clearly, I like it. It's actually just kind of a nice mechanical switch. Like you just want like a switch, and it's easy to attach a cable to it. Uh, I'll show you the insides. So it's got this nice metal body. There's an on switch. When you press it, it stays on, and then when you press off, it immediately turns off, and it's nice and red. So it's it's kind of a safety red. So you'll you know if you like need to immediately turn something off you'll probably remember hit the red switch and it will immediately disable it. And then you can open it with the, the thumb screw quite easily. And inside, there's three uh, contacts um, with these big chunky brass connections. And then inside, you can see this is the, the spring mechanism. Um, so you can have up to three wires that are connected or disconnected. These are just three separate SPST uh, switches. And then you can have cables running uh, through both ends. You can just remove this and have a cable coming in. And, uh, or you could punch a hole in this so it doesn't rub up against the metal, which is even better. And there's a little grounding stud as well if you'd like to uh, ground it to earth ground. I just think this is like, if you're having a project, you know, especially something that's, um, you know, it's in a body and you want to, you know, you, it's over there and you want to control it from over here. You could just have a cable coming over and, and, and turn it on or off or send a signal. And it's a nice handheld enclosure. So that's, that was kind of a nice, if you want to have a, a nice interface for your project. Okay. It's holiday time, so that means it's time to put electronics inside of clear things and put them on trees that were once in the ground that we saw and, and bushes and put them into yeah. homes or. Stuff. Well, people have yeah, they have a Christmas tree. What are you doing? Yeah. It doesn't sound like it's really weird. Um, no, it's not. I'm just just describing exactly what. Okay, it is. so we got two sizes of these DIY. Yeah. I mean, you the, can pick these up. We anywhere. wanted to make sure one fit a micro bit, and we wanted to make sure one fit fit a circuit. Playground. It even fits the circuit playground yeah. with the, um, it's in the with enclosure, so if you want to protect it even more. And we actually have a couple circuit, we actually have two circuit playground express projects that you can build with these as well, so check that out. Um, okay, so for the smaller one, I'll show you the smaller one. Comes in two pieces. Again, you don't have to have the circuit playground in a case, but if it's in a case, it'll fit. We recommend our 500 milliamp hour battery um, that fits quite well behind it. And then you just snap it on. Yeah, if you have like young folks and they want to decorate something on a tree, you can use make code and just plug this in and make a pattern and then they're done, put something special on the tree. And then it's like, well, I'm going to uh, spend time with them. I'm going to teach them like some Python and they can program Python. Like, and this is great. This is a project. It even looks a little bit like, it fits perfectly in ornament. Like it's a little bit too perfect. Like if you might shake it, it doesn't move because it's like a perfect yeah. fit. Of course, you can see all the LEDs, so you can do holiday light effects. Yeah, this looks super pro. It's and like, it's got, um, of course, the sound sensor, the light sensor. Uh, for the capacitive touch, you'd want to take a piece of, like, tape, and you can make a pad. You'd have to have it on the surface, maybe on the back. You could have it when you touch the back. But you'd have to have a little copper tape to do that. 
Yeah. Um, the speaker will still work. It'll be a little bit quieter because, of course, it's in this ball. Uh, and you can't touch the switches. But um, the accelerometer does work. So uh, a lot of your projects, you might want to have it like when it shakes or somebody taps it. Um, that's how we recommend if you're going to build projects because you can't press the buttons and you don't want people to kind of open and close this all the yeah, time. Yeah, microbit, you could do some Bluetooth stuff if you wanted. You can do Bluetooth or, again, you can do, um, yeah, you can do the accelerometer. And there's also capacitive touch. So I can just show you. I, I just um, We made sure that this one was big enough so that you could fit the battery pack that comes with the Go Pack. Uh, you might want to use a little bit of tape because it, it's not perfect, perfect fit. It's a, the ball is at a teeny bit larger, so it's a little loose. But a little bit of tape will hold it in place. And then, yeah, you can have a little micro bit um, displayed for the holidays. It's not too too big either. It should fit on a wreath or a small tree yeah. without too much difficulty. Okay. And then tonight, the start of the show, besides our community, new data, is this. Yeah, it's a, a simple bonnet. Um, I had this a while ago, and I kind of forgot to release it. So then I was like, wait, I don't have anything to release this weekend. I'm like, wait, do I, do I have this bonnet? Um, it's an iTwist bonnet using the UDA... 1334A, which we really like. We have a breakout for it. Um, it's a very nice, low cost, but actually really good sounding I2S amp. Um, so we made it into a bonnet so you can plug it into your Raspberry Pi. You know, we have it on a Pi Zero here, but you can use it on anything. Um, you get audio output through the 3.5 millimeter jack. Of course, if you want to connect RCA plugs, you can pick up RCA plugs and solder them in. You get all the pins broken out, and you get some power pins as well. We put ferrites and blocking capacitors, so this is safe to, you know, you can use it with headphones, but if the volumes are all the way up, you'll get a distortion. So, um, you know, you'll want to use this with a line out. That's what it's designed for. Like you plug it into powered speakers, or you power into a, a, a stereo, or something else that is expecting line out. But you can use headphones if you absolutely need to just turn the volume down a little bit and uh, just be aware it won't sound as good because it's not meant to drive headphones. Um, it uses I2S, so it's digital audio, so it sounds really good no matter what. Installing it is just you know one Python script that we wrote. You just run it, downloads, installs, does the uh, device tree overlay stuff for you, and uh, you get volume control with also mixer, and um, that's it. Pretty works quite easily, very well. Great for projects where you want a good quality audio. Even if you have a Pi 3 that has built-in audio, you know, the audio jack, it's, it's analog audio, and it's not going to be as quiet as a digital audio output. It's a little staticky in comparison. So um, this will give you a, a slightly better quality audio just because it's digital, but you're, you're paying for a separate hardware piece. Okay. So don't forget the code is ornament. Yes. But let's uh, do a new product recap later. Yeah. yeah. New, 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 new recap. Yeah. What's the show? We've got these nice large analog panel meters. Put a PWM signal in, and you've got a nice little needle output. You've got a 3 volt version, a 5 volt version, 5 volt for 5 volt microcontroller, 3 volt for anything that's 3 volt logic. Again, just PWM and 1 kilohertz are faster in, and boom, you got a really cool display. And display whatever you want. Um, this lanyard is um, designed by Bruce Yang here at Adafruit. It features all of your favorite characters. Uh, use it to spice up your badge life. This uh, separate on-off switch for like mechanics and robotics is handy for a project where you want a separate handheld on-off switch. It feels good in the hand, it's made of metal, nice and durable. One on switch, one off switch. Celebrate this season with uh, some code by sticking your micro bit or your circuit playground express in these clear DIY ornament balls, uh, code them up, Maybe use the accelerometer to have it light up or display a Halloween, or Halloween holiday message. And uh, you can get decorating now and be ready by Christmas. The uh, I2S DAC bonnet is a simple, low cost, but pretty good sounding uh, I2S digital audio for your Raspberry Pi Zero or, or Pi 2 or Pi 3. It can work with any Raspberry Pi with a 40 pin connector. It's fully assembled, uh, gives you stereo line out uh, over I2S, so it's really high quality, easy to install, and works really well. Okay, don't forget, um, because we're, gonna, we're going to be answering some questions soon in Discord. Don't forget to say different.it slash Discord. But first, there is some top secret. It's not out yet. From the Adafruit Vault. Yeah. Release. 840. It's 840. happening. It's happening. Yeah. You have to make it really big because it's like, well, how do I know which one I got? It's 840. 840. This is a big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. We've been working on this for a very long time. The 840 core is pretty much ready for people to use it. 
Um, so you're starting out with a feather. We have some other designs, maybe a circuit playground, maybe a metro, um, all featuring these lovely modules uh, for the NRF52840. It's a Bluetooth uh, Cortex M4 running at 64 megahertz. We've got a ton of flash, a ton of RAM. Don't remember off the top of my head how much, but it's a lot. And uh, best of all, it comes with native USB, which is epic. It means it runs Circuit Python. It shows up as a disk drive. It can be a MIDI device. It can be a keyboard. It can, again, it can be a, a serial UART. Um, very powerful. And of course, then you get the hardware UART pins. Uh, the NRF840 also has a lot more GPIO, so it's compared to the NRF51 uh, or 52. So it's, we had a lot of options. I have QSPY flash on there, two buttons, NeoPixels. Yeah, maybe a megabyte and 256K. I don't even know. A lot. Battery charging. And you got the SWD connector on there as well for the people. Because it, it's into the module. It's so integrated. You needed almost no components in addition. So this will be great. Works with all our feather wings, too. I tested them last night. You were there. You saw me. I was testing every single feather wing. They all work. Yeah. So all the goodness of a feather. Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth. USB. Super fast. Yeah. Native CircuitPython. Works with Arduino and CircuitPython. So yeah, it's coming okay. soon. Back in the vault. The 840. 840. Oh. All right. So soon. we're going to be in Discord right now. Answering Go questions. to Discord. 850 slash Discord. That's where we are. This is where we do this. There's how many? 9,000. Nine. I said over 9,000? Yeah, 9,000. Okay. So we got a lot of people over there. Yeah. All right. Let's, um, let's answer some questions. It can't be about the. Um, it's not out yet, though. So that's that. All right, let's see. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Oh, what's the rated amperage on that switch? The You know, the it switch. says um, 1.5 kilovolts, sorry, kilowatts, but, you know, I don't have, it's not like a certified specification. I would say 20 amps. Like looking at the switch, it looks like about 20 amps is what you can put through it. Here's a good question. Is there currently a way to display text on Halloween? Not yet. In, our, in Arduino, you can. Arduino, you can, but on CircuitPython, you can't yet, but we are... We're working on it. Yeah. We, we're, there's a lot of code, but in Arduino, you can use the GFX library. It supports text in a bunch of different fonts. In CircuitPython, right now, all we have is the ability to display images. We have bitmap. You can always bitmap put the text images, on a bitmap. Which, but, we've, which yeah. we've done. We've sort of like put text on a bitmap, and then we yeah, display the bitmap because we have a lot of... You have eight megabytes of space. But we don't have text quite yet, but it's coming soon. Soon. Um, someone, so you know what, Ben in Seattle, like that's not nice. Um, he says, I'm hoping that there is an audio bonnet plus Bluetooth receiver project guide, but is it true you don't answer questions as an engineer? I'm right here. We answer questions as an engineer, we answer them now. in Discord. So, Discord. Anyways, so yes, we answer questions and ask an engineer. Every I'm right week. here. We have a decade of what it. Do you, what was I just doing? <laughs> but it's not true. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Well, um, you know what? There's no yeah, question. Well, actually, the question was, do I answer questions? And I'm answering yeah, questions. Yeah, but do it in Discord because there's four different chat rooms. I don't see a question there. Yeah. Okay. All right, back over to Discord. Okay. All right, next up. Um, what do you recommend for a web server Raspberry Pi? Is Apache still king or is uh, NGX or something Ooh, else preferred? You know, I don't know. I mean, I actually always use Flask, which I think is built on Apache. Um, and it kind of does all the work for you for a Raspberry Pi. Like, I've never run like a real web server on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I know we did a Flask tutorial, whatever Flask uses, because it's like so fun to build websites with Flask. And that's like a Python package. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Scott happens to be in the chat. He's like, yeah, we're going to have text. <laughs> Scott, uh, Scott was Gro banished in a distracted project. Groguard Gro is going to use... Um, uh, Groguard suggests Flask. Yeah, people love it. It's, just, it's nice. Yeah. Very easy. Okay, is there any more questions? Uh, I think that's going to be it. All right. I answered them. That is... That is it. Okay, okay great. We got it uh, all. Do you want to give away something tonight? Yeah, we should totally give away. Ooh, what are we going to give away? I don't want to give away. Let's give away one of the I2S audio bonnets. Really? Most people have a Raspberry Pi, and then they could, they could make... We have I a, don't think it's someone. We have a guide for like making an AirPlay uh, player, so you could do that. Mm -hmm. All right, what are the rules for the trivia question? Okay, first person to call the phone, magic um, Radio Shack phone with the eyeball on it, is the winner. If I pick up the phone and I ask you your name, where you're calling from, the project you work on, you're working on, or you want to work on, if you're able to do that, 
Uh, you win the prize. You can't win if you already won, it, won before. I'm a little tired. If you've won before, you can't win again. You're only one winner for my lifetime. So call this phone number. I'm going to say ahoy ahoy. Y'all yeah. are smart. You know you don't talk about. You call this phone number. I'm going to say ahoy ahoy. I'm going to ask you your name, where you're calling from, a project you're working on, or you want to work on. Maybe your project is you want to work on a Raspberry Pi audio player. In which case, like you are so in luck because you're going to win this iTwist audio monitor. Okay. Uh. Sorry. Okay. Go, go, magic phone. When this, when this rings. Hi. Hello. This is the phone number, and if you want to win, you just have to dial the phone number. Dial this phone number. The little Lego figurine Sam D commands you. Call me. Win free stuff. Well, I'll just hang out here. Do, do, this might be one of our first weeks do, where we just have to hold on to the do, stuff. Maybe we'll just hold on to it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe yeah. just don't. Should I check if the phone's working? Yeah, the phone's working. The phone's working. But oh, the phone, yeah, for the person who's asking, that, that's the phone that's number. That's the on phone the number. You have to look at. You have to turn that into yeah. numbers. Yeah. You can do it. Type those letters. Can, um, you want to show the camera? Yeah, you want to show that. Do you want to, how do I turn this on? It's the uh, middle middle volume. You'll see it, the middle one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the... Oh, oh, wait. It's ringing. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Hello? Hello? Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Congratulations, you've managed to call this phone number. What's your name and uh, where are you calling from? You on, you on. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Craig. I'm calling from Pennsylvania. Hey, Craig from Pennsylvania. Well, congratulations. You've won a fabulous I2S audio bonnet. Uh, what's the project you're working on or you want to work on? Uh, I am working on, right now I have a Raspberry Pi Zero W that has a, uh, a Neo, NeoPixel board and mm -hmm. also a, uh, a, actually a, an audio bonnet on it. Well, I'm going to make a, a thundercloud. You're going to have another audio bonnet, which is good because maybe you want to have speakers, maybe you want to like, line out. Now you got two options. Cool. Cool, good for you. Uh, congratulations. All you have to do is email support at adfruit.com. Say, hey, it's Craig from Pennsylvania, and I want a product number 4037, and they will send it out to you. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much, and have a wonderful night. All right, thanks. Good night. All right, sweet. Craig, come on. Good work, Craig. Decoding those letters into numbers. Not easy. Not easy. That is the show for that. Later. Okay. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Uh, don't forget to email support at Adafruit, Craig, and um, tell them 4037. Um, before we go, don't forget the code's ornament. 10% off all the way up to 11.59 p.m. 10% off yep. everything in the shop. Supports all the development of the things you like, like CircuitPython. Pays for all the team members. Does all the stuff that you like here at Adafruit, including Buys the show. Buys picking places. Yeah. Um, this is... This is, this is how we pay the bills. So Buy uh, snakes that we hang on our yep. payphone. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, we'll be here next week. Thanks to all of our remote team members, all the team members that are helping out. Let's see who's here tonight. And, uh, I think... Uh, it's Takara. Hi, Takara. Hi, Takara. Thanks for helping out in our Adafruit Slack that we do to run stuff behind the scenes here at Adafruit. Thanks Yay. to all the Discord community members and more celebrating 9,000. Very much appreciated. And we'll see everybody next week. And uh, be good to one another. Thanks, everybody. Here is your moment of Zener. Bye. Good night. Ooh.